And then what we did for a number of weeks is really talk in detail about individual tests, individual statistical tests. And there's a number of them, six of them in fact, that we've learned about throughout this unit. So we started off with t-tests and we had three different kinds of t-tests. The one sample t-test, the independent samples t-test, and the paired samples t-test. We then moved on to correlations and specifically we talked about a Pearson's correlation. And then we finished with chi-square tests for our categorical data. And that was looking at two different kinds of chi-square tests. So the chi-square goodness of fit test and the chi-square test of independence. So it's a lot of tests, it's six different tests. And one of the most important things for you to know at this point is how do you know or to work out how you can know what tests you should use under what circumstances. And this is probably one of the most important things and the, the things that students struggle with the most is what test do I use under what circumstances? How do I know if I should be doing a correlation or a t-test or a chi-square test? What's the difference between them? How do I make that decision? And remember, because I've said to you before, and I'll remind you again, that there's three things that I've talked about that will help you make that decision. The first one being the hypothesis or the research question. So what it is that you're actually trying to investigate? What it is that you're trying to test? Are you trying to see if there's a difference between groups? Are you trying to see if there's a relationship between two numeric variables? You also need to think about what kind of variables you've got. So are they numeric variables? Are they categorical variables? If they're numeric variables, what kind of distribution do they have? Are they normally distributed or do they have other kinds of weird distributions? And then the third thing to think about is the assumptions that go along with each of the tests, because every test that we've talked about has a set of assumptions, assumptions being criteria that should be met in order for the test to be a valid thing to do, in order for the test to be meaningful, in order for you to be actually running the test in the first place. So those are the three pieces of information that you really should be using in order to make the decision about what test to run. So the test, the six tests that you've learned about in this um, unit so far, this unit full stop, um, is a very small coverage of all of the possible statistical tests out there. You'll be pleased to know that there's many, many, many more that we could have talked about and that you might learn about in the future. Um, but in terms of the scope of what we've talked about for this unit, I've made this chart that will hopefully help you make the decision about what test to use under what circumstance. And the thing that starts this decision making process at the top is how many variables there are that are involved in your hypothesis. If you have one variable and if that's a numeric variable, then the test that goes along with that is the one sample t-test. If it's a single numeric, if it's a single variable, but it's not numeric, it's a categorical variable, then the test that we've learned that goes along with that is the chi-square goodness of fit test. Most commonly you'll have two or more variables rather than just one. We've never covered anything in this unit that's been more than two variables. It's only ever going to be one variable or two variables. So when you have two variables, if they're both numeric variables and what you want to do is to test the strength of a linear relationship to determine how strong a straight line relationship is, then the test you're going to want to run is a Pearson's correlation. If what you want to do is to test to see whether a numeric variable varies between two different groups or two different categories, so if there's one numeric and one categorical variable, if they're independent groups, separate groups, not related groups, then it's going to be the independent samples t-test that you're going to want to run. If they're related groups, so either related people or the same people over two time points say, then it's going to be a paired t-test that you're going to want to run. And finally, if the two variables that you've got are two categorical variables, and what you want to do is to see if there's a relationship between these two categorical variables, then the test you're going to want to run is a chi-square test of independence. And then the extra element into this uh, diagram is that these tests are only appropriate if your assumptions are met. So if your assumptions are not met, then you're going to go off in a different direction that you haven't learnt about in this unit, but I'll come back to towards the end of this lecture. 
In week 12, you talked about a couple of um, different sorts of concepts with your guest lecturer, Mike. Um, and one of the things that Mike talked to you about was the distinction between the statistical significance and the size of an effect. And he showed you where you could have an example where you would have the same size of the effect, the same difference between groups. But if you change the sample size, you will then directly change the actual p-value, the statistical significance of the test that you might run on that difference between the groups. And it's a really important point that I'm going to talk about multiple times before we finish today. Um, this idea of not just focusing on the statistical significance, but also looking at the actual size of the effect. Is this an important effect? Is it a meaningful effect? Is it useful to us? Is it practically beneficial for us? And the size of the effect is going to be the thing that gives you information to answer those questions rather than just the statistical significance. He also talked to you about the idea of not just using a P of 0.05 as your cutoff for significance, if you're in a situation where you're running multiple statistical tests. And this is something that you don't need to understand the details or the mechanics of how to actually do that in this instance. All I want you to understand is the principle that that is a necessary thing to do if you're running multiple statistical tests. I don't need you to understand how to do it, just the fact that it is an important thing to do. And that's because our cutoff for significance is our probability of making a type one error. And the more tests that we do, the higher our chance of making a type 1 error. So to try to control for that, to try and get that under control, we then might want to decrease our chance of making a type 1 error by directly changing our cutoff for significance, what it is that we're calling statistically significant. And the other element of that lecture that you learned about was about communicating statistics. So principles for communicating statistical results, both in graphs and also in general as well. 